G'day guys, welcome back again. I haven't poured for oh, four days now, so I need to do a pour for you, I've been working. So, um, let me show you a couple of pours that I've done recently. They're dry now. This is the first one. I did a couple of pastel paintings. So this is the first one, dried perfectly. My pores really don't change from when I finish them, from when you see the, the finished pour to the dry pour. They really don't change. Um, so, well, they dry, they dry sort of matte, but apart from that, the cells don't move, nothing happens, they don't crack, so all good. That one, that was the, um, the lovely lilac one. And then this one, I cut down a little bit on the purple. I just thought it was a bit overpowering. Uh, so that's that one there. Also dry. Um, as I said, less purple in this one. And this um, apricot really took over. So I'm not sure if I like it so much. But everyone seems to like it. They said it looks like um, the beach and that sort of thing. So I've called it tidal pools. I think it looks like little tidal pools with little shells and things like that in it so that's that one those two dry right now today's pour I'm going to do metallics for you and I'm going to show you one now don't laugh I did this one uh, probably two years ago before I knew what I was doing I don't know if it's not going to all fit in the frame I don't think but that's it there that was black, white, and gold. Just flow troll and paint. Um, yeah, before I really knew what I was doing. So it's it's still pretty. I'm keeping it for sentimental value because I've learned a lot since then. Now you can see that my cells aren't very good shaped. They're all sort of wobbly and bumping into each other. Too much oil, uh, too, paint too thin. So anyway, I'm gonna go again and see if any. I have improved in my two years. One would like to think so, hey? So let's go again with the metallics. Doing quite a big canvas today. So I've been doing the 30 by 60 centimeters lately, which is a 12 by 24 inch. This one's bigger. Uh, it is a 40 by 80 centimeter, which is um, I think it's 16 by 32 inch, so relatively big. I've got, I'll tell you about my colours later, I've got treadmill silicone oil in all my colours, I've got five drops in all the colours except the black and white, my pouring medium today is my glue and water mix, love it, not changing it, on a good thing, stick to it. 60% glue, 30% water, 10% flow troll. Now I know a lot of you guys have been trying this and really getting good results from that mix, so good on you. So keep it up, keep up the good work. Um, right, so as I said, metallics. Um, the pour, oh, the mix is quite thick, mound on a mound. And I've gone extra thick with my metallics because you've heard me say it before, metallics don't play nice. They mix, they look really thick in the in the jar or in the tube, but then when you mix them up they go really thin They're, it's a bit strange how they do that so the black is uh, the black and the white are Liquitex basics and the rest are all globals so I've got uh, two shades of gold I'll tell you about them in a minute and a copper a silver a rose gold so just trying to get some different shades of metallics in here. The copper is the only one that I, I mixed 50-50. Um, got lumps. I made this paint yesterday. I thought, I thought I'd have time to do a pour before work yesterday, but I just ran out of, out of time. And then Silly me, I rushed out the door and didn't cover my paints with anything. So they've been sitting in my in my workshop, which is my garage, all day yesterday until I got home at about seven o'clock last night. 
uncovered and it was a really hot day yesterday. We got to about 33 degrees in Queensland, so it was a really hot day. And um, yeah, some of the paints have gone a bit, well, they had a little bit of dried sort of paint around the top of the cup. And I think some of that's gone in and yeah, a little bit lumpy, so my bad. I should have remembered to cover them and I just rushed out the door in the end and forgot all about it. So if you're going to keep your paints, make sure they're covered. Even if you put another cup over the top, you can wrap some foil over them. So anyway, my ratio, as I said, my pouring medium, I showed you that, my glue and water mix, and I've mixed that. It's supposed to be 50-50. Um, half pouring medium, half paint. But... The metallics, as I said, are a little bit different. They're a mix up thinner. Oh, I used a lot of silver in that one. Um, so the copper was the only one that actually mixed up 50-50. Uh, the others were really, really thin, and I had to actually mix them one and a half parts paint to one part pouring medium. With the two Liquitex Basics, I did it the opposite way. I did one and a half parts pouring medium to one part paint because they were a really thick paint, so I needed more pouring medium for that. So even though I say, general, as a general rule, you can have 50% pouring medium to 50% paint, it's not going to work with all brands of paint. So you know, I had one lady message me and say, oh, I tried your pouring medium and your ratio and it didn't work. And I'm thinking, well, it's, you know, it sounds as if you're kind of blaming me here. And I said, well, were you using global paints like I do? And she said, no. And I said, well, there you go. You know, your paints are obviously thinner. If you're using a different brand, your paints are most likely a thinner mix or a thicker mix. And you have to adjust it accordingly. It's not going to work with all brands of paint. If you've got a really thin brand of paint, obviously you use less pouring medium. If you've got a really thick brand of paint, you would have to use more pouring medium. So I, I don't know what you're all using, so I'm just telling you what I use and I tell you that you need a mound on a mound. You trace, it leaves a little ribbon on top and if you can do that, then hopefully your mix will be, will be good. You can use any brand of paint, you just have to thin it down enough or thicken it up enough to get that good consistency. See the little crusty bits over the top of my stick there that were sort of around the cup. I did try to get them all out, but I've got my little tweezers handy in case I need to pull any little chunky bits out. Hopefully it'll be all right. So six cups today, six flip cups. Hoping this is going to work because my last metallic one not the one I did two years ago, but my other metallic one. Actually, I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, my mix was a little bit on the thin side on that one too. That was the one that I, I varnished with that um, auto paint. I'll show it to you in a minute once I've got all these cups out of the way. So I've just tried separating my metallics with, um, you know, a white or a black. Try to keep the two goldy ones apart. Try to keep the, the copper and the rose gold apart. Just so that my cells will be more defined. If you have two golds next to each other, obviously your cells aren't going to be very well defined, are they? Whereas if you have a, a copper and a gold next to each other, then, you know, you'll be able to see your rings around cells but two golds a ring around a gold ring around a gold cell isn't really going to show up very well is it so you just need to try and separate your colors in the cup uh, so what have I got um, if you guys have seen my little calculation video my little maths on how to work out how much paint you need um, you'll be able to work out how much you need. Now, what did I do? I can't even remember. As I said, I made these yesterday. Um, I've got 
think about 160 grams of mixed paint in each cup. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cups. Um, I think I've got 1200 grams of mixed paint. Because when I do a 400 by 400, which is half of this, 400 by 400, uh, 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter canvas, I use 600 grams of mixed paint. So 600 and 600. So I should have 1200 grams of mixed paint. I haven't got much silver left, so let's just do a little drizzle. I think I put a bit much in my first layer. Got carried away. I was debating whether to use my dark silver or my light silver. There's another little lumpy bit there. I'll make sure I don't get that in there. The dark silver is really quite dark. It's like a, a pewter. And I found that normally when I use that with black, I get quite a, a dull greyish colour. So that's why I've gone with my light silver today. Hopefully that'll, that'll give me a good result. And I've gone with two blacks. Everything else I've just got one of and two blacks because they're all relatively pale colours and I thought I needed the black just to help the cells pop. And I wanted really nice cells, so that's why I've gone with the black and white Liquitex Basics because they're a highly pigmented paint. I'm hoping that they'll give me nice cells with rings around them. That's the plan, anyway. So that's what we're going for. Um, last of the copper again. Another hot day today. It's only eight o'clock in the morning and it's hot, hot, hot already. I've got the air conditioners going in the house and I've got my air conditioner going in the studio. I've got the day off work today, so I'll probably do a few pours today. Well, this one and then maybe another one. There's, a one, there's another pour that I've got in mind that I want to do. So I'll do a couple today. Because when I'm working during the week, I, I don't have time to paint. But I still want to upload something every day or every two days if I can. So if I do a couple of pours today, that's two days worth of videos for you guys. And I've got another workshop this weekend, so I won't be able to paint on Saturday. Look at that. More lumpy bits. All right. Note to self. Don't make up paints the day before. I don't usually. I just yeah, I did that yesterday because I thought I was going to have time to paint, but I didn't. Now I've sprayed my cups with some silicone oil, as usual. Whoa, I lifted that one. There's a hair in there. Uh, there's a timber beam under the here, and there's a tiny little gap between the timber bar and the canvas so I've put a little thin piece of puppy piddle pad one of these um, just underneath between the timber bar and the canvas just so that it won't sag in the middle all right I'll show you my colors Got a little bit of white left over from the other day, um, but I have been keeping covered, so just in case I need that for anything, um, I've got it. Right, I've shown you the black and white, the Liquitex Basics. Now I've got my metallic silver and metallic gold. This gold's a little bit lighter, it's called Brilliant Gold. It was one of the limited edition colours, you can see the, the difference. Lighter and darker gold. And then my rose gold, well this is just in my little container that I use, that's my rose gold. That's metallic copper, so that's um, 
that is gold and copper mixed together. Copper, gold, rose gold. So if you mix those two together, you'll get a rose gold. So that's what I've done and I've just put it into my container there so it's ready to go when I want it. Just smooth out my little blobs. Not that it matters really, but why not? A little bit of spilled paint there. I won't cry over spilled paint. Might as well just pick it up and put it there. And that corner is covered. Make sure you all get yourselves one of these little palette knives. Really good for picking up paint. Right, let's do this. I'm a bit nervous actually because it's a lot thicker than I normally would go. Oh, I was going to show you my metallic core. Yeah, it's a bit thicker than I would normally go, but if I go thin, then I end up with um, wobbly cells. This was that um, one that I poured that um, auto varnish on. So it's lovely and shiny. It's more of a satin shine, really. It's lovely, lovely finish. But you can see the cells. The middle bit's good. Um, over here, they're getting a little bit stretched out. That's the copper there. Um, got a caterpillar. So the the um, I think it was just a bit overstretched, maybe a little bit too thin. But anyway, we'll go again today. See how we go. Right, let's do it. Oh, I've got a lot left over. I'm gonna have to drag slower. Didn't do very well with that. Let's drag slower, and then you drag slower, and you only get to here. When you're doing this, imagine that you're dragging right to the end here, not here. So if you keep that in your mind that you're dragging to here, uh, not there, you tend to be able to get further down. And I think the reason why it's not working terribly well today is because my paints are thicker. So I'm ending up with more paint in the cup, but that's all right. I'm just going to pop it back. That one I didn't, I didn't do fast enough, so I've got a lot of paint at the top. Just do that. I might just bring it down just to touch this big blob here. So I've got a lot there. Alright, I'll just stick to the fast ones and, and bring the rest up. I think that works better rather than having a big blob here. I can go for my nice stripey look. I should get stripes today because I'm bringing my paint back up like that. Aren't those pretty colours? Last one. A little bit more here. It's a big gap there. Put more paint there. Trying to get it all out. Not much left in these cups. But I will use it all up. What have I got left in these guys? There's a bit. Um, a bit more here. Quite pretty, that's all the copper coming through. Let's do that through the middle there. Pretty copper. And what have we got in this one? A little bit here. enough. 
won't use the rest, not that there's much in there anyway, but that will do for now. Okay, well, happy so far. I've got some little cells popping up. Now, where's my torch? Here it is. Big butane torch. Gives a really nice low overall heat, go nice and high, just turning it down a bit, go round and round in circles and you can see when it starts reacting to the surface then you know that you're close enough, if you can't see anything happening on the surface then you're a little bit too high so just get a little bit lower, I'm just going to go around once and then wait and see what happens and then go over it again. Don't worry about you popping your bubbles at this stage because you might go too close and you think, oh, I've got to get that bubble right there. There's a couple there. And then you go too close and you burn it or you get a caterpillar or you get this huge colony of cells. Just leave your bubbles. You can pop them later with a little bamboo skewer. Right, I think those two have got enough cells. Let's start up here again. Go around and around. These white ones are pretty. Look at those. Yeah, they're all looking good so far. Probably got a few too many here. A few too many there. Probably got a bit close there. It's hard though because as you're torching, you can't see the cells come up automatically. It takes a while. You know, it takes a, a minute or so for them for the heat to come up through the paint with the silicone brings the cells to the surface so you need to wait and see what happens it's not going to happen straight away well actually I shouldn't say it won't happen straight away if your mix is really thin and your um, silicone is near the surface yes your cells will come up quickly but if your paint's thick like this and your silicone is quite low down um, or deep down in your paint it's going to take longer for that silicone to come to the surface side to side as I tip down towards you and see if we can get everything covered. What I'm going to do is with my extra white here I'm just going to pour it on the side just to help this paint flow over the edge. So the weight of that white paint will just help it go over for me. And the same on this side, there's a little bit of canvas showing, just there, that will just help the paint. It's not so important with these long edges because I'm going to go that way, it's just I don't really tilt very much to the sides, I try not to tilt very much to the sides. See how that's going over already because that white paint's there. So that's gone over. I'm going to need to close this up, this little gap here, and go over to the other side. There we go. So that's touching there. All right. I'm going to start going side to side, more to this way because there's a big gap there. I'll put a little bit of white there just to help that through. And if you've got a, a blob at the end of something and you don't like it, just run your stick through and uh, continue your line through so it looks as if it's supposed to be there. All right, I should take my time. Slow down, slow down, Julie. Take your time. You don't want to ruin this one. 
This is a special one. It's a big one. Lots of paint. Metallic paint's more expensive than the regular paint, so slow down. Take your time. A little bit of white just to help it go over. See how easily that white just helps the paint flow over the edge? The weight of it just helps it go over. Alright, I think I'm over, am I? Can't see. Bring it back. It's quite heavy. Heavy canvas, lots of paint on it. It's a big canvas anyway, and uh, as I said, 1.2 kilos of mixed paint. Alright, um, cells are relatively small. Because as you saw, I pretty much covered the whole thing with paint, so I haven't been able to really stretch it. But that's that's okay. Um, I've, I'm actually quite liking the smaller smaller cells. So now I have to try and turn this around somehow without getting it all over me. Can one of you jump down and help me turn this? Pretty please. Jump down from TV land. I like to. I like to tilt away from myself. Besides, if I was tilting to myself, you wouldn't see what I was doing because I'd lift that end up and miss all of what was happening down here. It's running off a little bit, so I'm just going to do that. Losing a bit on the edges here. Okay. Um, yes, I know I'm putting it off. I'm going to put a bit of paint on my edges here while I can. And I need, I need some that'll do that lighter one. So just pick it up like that, put it there, and let it fall down on its own. Don't rub it in because um, it'll just make a bit of muddy look. So just pop it on the top, let it run down on its own, and make its own little pattern. much more attractive than you rubbing it in. Alright, I should do that later, shouldn't I? Get on to it. You guys want to watch, don't you? So I've got some areas on the side that I need to cover. A little bit on that side. But yeah, it's looking really good so far, you guys. I'm, I'm happy. I just wish I hadn't have torched so much there. I wonder if I can get my hand under there. I've tried with it in the past trying to put my hand under the canvas and it hasn't really done a lot. Well, it's doing a little bit today. Look at that, it's opening. But I do have to watch up here, my right, your left, at what I'm doing because it's moving there as well. That's opened up a little bit. Okay. Um, and I'll do the same over here. I'll try and get that to go that way a little bit, but this is a problem here. I need to get onto this bit here. Try and kiss that up a little bit. I don't know if I can actually. Mm, do I trust a little bit of paint? Let's run a bit off first. Run a bit off first till we get to our lines and then once the lines start appearing, we can add a little bit more. And as I said before, if you get a little blobby end like that, that's okay. Don't stick your finger in it or anything, just get a stick. Just continue it through so it looks as if it's supposed to be there. No one will ever know. Like that, see? Easy peasy. All right. Still 
got a tiny little gap there. Go on, move over, see, see your neighbours. try with my hand underneath later rather than Let's see what happens I've got quite a bit of paint there on your bottom left there I might be able to move some of that over pretty though so I don't want to lose too much of it now I have to come back again It's always a problem stretching to get to one corner. I don't like to do it. I did it today and I shouldn't have. Stretching right across to get to that corner. Okay, so now we just need to get this last little bit done. So let's go. stop there for a sec and put a little bit more white you can use white you can use black or just whatever you've got a little bit of paint left over to try and encourage everything over the edge it's going to go over anyway so it doesn't matter what color you use If it doesn't go over, then it really doesn't matter because it matches anyway. You've got white in there. Okay. I'm glad that big blob of copper went. I wasn't happy with that. All right, I think that will do. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Good, good, good. I like that. Woohoo! This is a little bit squished here. I don't think I can go that way anymore. You know what happens when you try and get a corner. Just don't even, just don't even go there. It's not worth it, you guys. I'm trying to get that tiny little corner. I'm just going to, what can I do? I'm just going to pick up some paint and just put it there. There. Pick up some matching paint from underneath. Put it there, let it run over. Clean up the edges. And I will give it a very light torching. Just in a couple of spots, just here. Where there's nothing happening and my cells look a little bit overstretched. Although I do need to, with the composition, see it's very busy. You've got lots of big little cells there. Excuse me, little cells there. And then bigger stretched ones here. So I actually need to just tilt it a little bit. And I'm not going to move the whole thing around again. So sorry if you can't see. Just tilt a little bit towards me just to stretch those little ones out. And just come down. And I like to leave the majority of the paint in the centre. I don't like... So I had just stretched it all over there, so I had a lot of paint up here. I like to bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. See, this has opened up a little bit more. Um, so I will stretch, uh, stretch, torch just a little bit in there. Um, pretty much just on the edges, really, where my cells have gone a little bit stretched, and maybe I want just a few little cells popping up just in between them. Do you like that? 
I like that. Um, the cells, I think, are much better than my previous one that I did. Well, <laughs> in comparison to the one that I did two years ago, there is no comparison. I've certainly learnt a lot, haven't I? Right, now I'm just going to fill in a little bit of... Oops, I need a dark one for that. Try and match your colours. I've learnt a lot over the years. I started painting because I moved house and my other house was all dark chocolate furniture. I've told you the story before. Dark chocolate furniture, um, it was sort of a Japanese theme, I guess, with lots of red and white. My walls were all white, my floors were all cream. Um, very minimalistic sort of a look. Um, and then Japanese themed artwork with the, the chocolate and the white and the red. And then when I moved out here to um, a couple of acres, um, I wanted to go more of a sort of a country look. I went Hamptons, pale floors, grey walls, um, and pops of blues. So I'll get around to those corners later. I've got some edges to do. Um, do that later. Okay, so anyway, that's why I started painting because I had no artwork for the new house. And you go to the shops. And there's the painting, and it's it was like a grey background. It was relatively big, I guess, maybe a metre by a metre. And just a grey background, and it had these two or three like swipes of paint that someone had just gone like that with a paintbrush, like that. $900 they wanted. So I thought, no, nah, I can paint my own. So that's how it all started. And um, right, let's go back to this one. So one of my early, early paintings a couple of years ago. That's it, see my cells? All wobbly, misshapen. They don't have nice rings around them. They don't have multi colours in them. It's all just a bit muddy and blurry. So this is how I've progressed. I would like to think I've progressed and my new glue and water mix certainly has helped. The glue is a nice thick base. It tends to hold the cells well. So let me take you in for a close-up. I shall show you this one again. Sorry if it's a bit of a long video. So similar. Um, probably a little bit overstretched. See I've got a lot of this here with no cells. Cells are quite wobbly. Don't drop it in the painting. There we go. So again, much better. So I learn, I learn a lot from painting and showing you guys what I'm doing. I love it. Love it, love it. So I'm gonna take you in for a close up and then I will do my sides. I won't waste your time now doing my sides because I can do that later. All right, uh, let's get you in for a close up. Take you down. There we go, around the corner. So that's it from my point of view, my perspective. I'm so glad that I did the two cups of black. It really needed it, didn't it? You want your cells to pop with all these relatively pale colours. If you don't have enough black, as I said before, you know, you you don't get nice defined cells. So here I've got like black cells with rings around them. This one's here, look at those ones. Those ones have got the white rings around them. That's the Liquitex Basics, making those gorgeous rings around the cells. Here as well, white around the, the cells. So pretty. Maybe a little bit on the busy side. Like it's, you know, I've got lots of lots of cells, but then I did torch a lot, so probably need to just wait a bit longer and wait for those cells to come up. Don't really, really like this block here of the copper. 
Um, my copper, I probably had too much copper there and not enough of another colour next to it. But uh, overall, I torched afterwards. And um, I think I'm running out of memory, so I will see you for the next pour. There we go, back in focus. <laughs> Please subscribe for my um, my YouTube channel. That would be great. And share these videos around. I'd love to get my work out a little bit more. So that would really help out. And hit the button, the little bell, so that you can get the notifications of when I do another video. So you can watch them all. And uh, show me your work. Join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group. I know there's a lot of you that have been doing these pours now using my mix. And they are looking fantastic. So keep up the good work. Alright, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.